uh, we all are excited in IMS that our VC, Honorable VC, has visited and that to our lecture hall. So we begin with, I will request our director to welcome our vice chancellor by offering flower. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have started our program. Uh, to begin with, I will request our director, uh, Dr. V.K. Shukla, to come on dais and to welcome. Thank you, Professor Srivastava. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Bhatnagarji, to this uh, smart classroom. I think we are privileged to have this uh, classroom and the credit goes to Dr. Srivastava because he has been the nodal officer for the telemedicine facility in the institute and we are supposed to cater the 50 medical colleges from four states. And I am happy to inform you that this activity is now on. Any one of you who are interested to share your thoughts, lectures, research, you can use this facility and it can go all the way to all 50 medical colleges. So I welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor and all of you for having come here to attend the, this precious lecture. I think it is uh, really we are, what can I say, we are really fortunate to have this, you know, the clone to, clone to clinic. This is what we talk, you know, the bench to bedside. So, it is in true sense that sir has done the research which has been trans transferred to the patient and this is what the government, the Honorable Prime Minister and all scientific community are looking forward to for any research which is being conducted, how it is going to benefit the mankind. With these few words, once again, I welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor and all of you and I request him to deliver his lecture. Uh, 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 I was going through the bio data of our Vice Chancellor. It was containing many, many pages and too many details. So it was difficult for me. So I wanted to save time of um, uh, Sir and because Sir was very much interested in uh, delivering lecture and I'm really, I'm, uh, I felt enthusiastic after meeting him. So a brief introduction, many new things you all will know. Our Professor Rakesh Bhatnagar, he pursued his PhD from Department of Biochemistry, National Sugar Institute, Kanpur, and followed by working in Friedberg University, Germany, University of CN, France, and NIH and USA, MRIID, USA. Sir, one thing at this juncture, that uh, you did uh, PhD from National Sugar Institute. When I was doing MD uh, from Gorakhpur Metal College, my topic was on sugar factory workers. So I had visited that somewhere in 81 or 82. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. And uh, uh, he pioneered the teaching of biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University, the first of its kind in the country. Professor Bhatnagar is well known for developing recombinant vaccine against anthrax. So this is his very big achievement. This technology has been transferred to industry and the vaccine is undergoing human clinical trial. Professor Bhatnagar, a former Vice Chancellor of Kumayu University, Nanital. In addition to being J.C. Bose Fellow, he is an elected fellow of all three major sciences, science academies of India and received the Innovation Award from the President of India two years back in 2016. With more than 150 research papers to his credit, his publications has received more than 4,000 citations. He has supervised more than 50 PhD students and has been able to attract research finding of about equivalent to US dollar 5 million. This much uh, uh, research fund he could uh, gather. Professor Bhatnagar's research has been ranked seventh. The first six were from Pasteur Institute, Harvard Medical School, NIH and USAM RIID in the anthrax research globally. So he ranked at seventh as a scientist at world level. Professor Bhatnagas has been a successful 
administrator and institution builder. He has served the university at various important positions like chairperson, director, dean. Because of his efforts, School of Biotechnology has been ranked at number one biotechnology teaching program in the country consistently. He has created a world-class biology safety laboratory level three. One more very important message I would like to, uh, or information I would like to give. Uh, we have uh, LAL pathology and uh, uh, the pathology lab, they were conducting investigation related to resistant to tuberculosis. And the cost of each test was around 7,000. So if I'm wrong, please correct me, sir. The cost was per patient, per test was around 7,000 rupees. So he developed a technique and he has not patented, he has given free of cost. Now the cost has reduced to only 270 rupees for the same test. <laughs> so really get great, great help to the poor. And uh, I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor to deliver his talk. Sir, please. Uh, I just have to click to yes, change. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, rather good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to interact with all of you scientifically. Until now, we have been talking other things, but uh, it's always a pleasure to share uh, the work which we have been doing for the last two decades. And the topic of my uh, talk is recombinant vaccine against anthrax from clone to clinical trials. And I think uh, this is the uh, best venue for that because you all are uh, either medical students or faculty or my colleagues. You will enjoy it the most, I hope. And if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, anthrax is a uh, disease of animals, but human beings are accidental hosts. When they come in contact with either infected animals or animal products, they can get infected. If you look at the global scenario, I think all these uh, blue spots where you see the anthrax is epidemic, but if, if you look at India, it's sporadic. So sometimes you see the uh, epidemics, but you know it goes on and uh, uh, periodically they keep coming. If you try to look at India, you see all these uh, dark blue spots where Anthrax is more common, but gradually it is spreading to nearby areas. Uh, this is the uh, graph I have made where, you know, from 2001 to 2017, how the anthrax epidemics have been reported in India. Odisha is, you know, one of the places where you see a lot of uh, uh, outbreaks. Uh, Jharkhand also you see, West Bengal also plenty, and Andhra Pradesh also. And sometimes in Tamil Nadu, sometimes you know elsewhere. If you want to look at the patient, how it looks, uh, anthrax is usually of three kinds. Uh, one, which is the most easily treated, is uh, cutaneous anthrax, as the name indicates. Uh, it's the skin infection. So what happens whenever there is a there is a, a cut or aberration in your exposed areas of your body, and an anthrax pores get inoculated. Uh, initially, you see some redness, uh, which results in a vesicle, eventually a scar, and uh, it looks terrible. Uh, but um, if it is treated and there is no mortality, it can be uh, treated by regular antibiotics, but if it is not treated, you get something like 20% fatality in certain such cases. 
gastrointestinal anthrax. This is another uh, important uh, kind of anthrax, uh, which is very common in tribal areas, where uh, tribal people think if there is a death of uh, elephant or uh, rhino or any big animal of, because of the anthrax, they do not understand that and they think it is a gift from God. And let us uh, uh, celebrate and uh, eat meat or, uh, out of uh, this dead animal. And sometimes it is infected with uh, uh, anthrax and uh, it causes, you know, uh, abdominal pain. And uh, this kind of uh, patients, unless they are treated with antibiotics, 50% uh, uh, of them uh, die of anthrax. Uh, the most dangerous form of anthrax is in inhalation anthrax. As the name indicates, it's through inhalation and lungs are the affected site. And uh, this kind of anthrax is most dangerous uh, unless the person is treated well in time. And well in time means even before seeing the symptoms. I think you all are doctors, let me know. Uh, do you ever treat a patient without seeing the symptoms? No. So what happens that the, by the time the person reports the symptoms, it's already too late. Death is almost guaranteed. Unless somebody inhales some suspicious uh, powder and somebody thinks that it may be anthrax and then he goes to the clinic and uh, reports as it happens in 2001 in United States and Florida. So death is almost guaranteed. And that is the reason uh, the causative agent for this bacillus anthracis has been regarded as biological warfare agent. Notorious people, terrorists can use it. In former times, even some of the defense department used to do some offensive research on uh, making it uh, uh, weapon grade uh, bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis is nothing but a gram positive bacteria. It looks like this under the microscope. Uh, it has two plasmids. One is PXO1, another is PXO2 we call it. In fact, we only named it. Uh, PXO1 uh, codes for protective antigen, lethal factor and edema factor. These are the three very important virulence factors uh, of this organism. On the other hand, PXO2 <coughs> encodes for polydeglutamic acid capsule. Uh, both these virulence factors, uh, both these plasmids are required to give uh, full uh, pathogenic nature. Is there a problem? I thought it's smart, okay. So uh, both these plasmids are needed uh, so that the bacteria is fully pathogenic. If you cure one of the plasmids, uh, the bug cannot cause the disease. Anthrax spores are highly stable. Uh, they can survive in the environment as long as 120 years. And the mild acid, mild uh, alkali, sun rays, they do nothing to uh, anthrax spores. Uh, to understand my talk, these three molecules are very important. Uh, bacillus anthracis, when you grow them in culture, they make these three important proteins. They are virulence factors. One, we call it protective antigen. The other one is uh, edema factor. And another one is lethal factor. All these three proteins, which are around 80 to 90 kilodalton in terms of molecular weight, they themselves are not toxic, they are not harmful. However, in combination, for example, protective antigen and lethal factor, when they are combined together, they become lethal toxin and they are responsible for lethality in animals as well as in humans. On the other hand, edema factor and protective antigen together make edema toxin, which causes edema of the skin. I showed you a picture of the uh, uh, anthrax where it is causing extensive edema. Edema factor is nothing but calcium cadmodulin dependent adenylate cyclase. 
it makes it converts ATP into cyclic AMP. On the other hand, lethal factor, uh, lethal factor is uh, a protease. It is a zinc dependent metalloprotease uh, which can clip MAP kinase kinase series of enzymes from the N terminal. It can cause death in animals as well as humans. Let me give you a little cartoon which will help you to understand how these dangerous molecules attack the cells. Protective antigen, which is a 83 kilodalton molecule, it has receptor on almost all eukaryotic cells. It can come and bind to the high affinity receptor on eukaryotic cells. There is a protease sitting on the cell surface. Uh, it's called furin-like protease. It can come and clip the molecule from 63 uh, 83 kilodalton to 63 kilodalton and removes a 20 kilodalton portion. Once this 20 kilodalton portion is removed, this protective antigen 63 kilodalton is able to bind uh, to lethal factor as well as edema factor. So these two molecules can bind and then this whole complex goes inside the cell uh, by a process called receptor mediated endocytosis. I think you all have studied in your cell biology classes. Once it goes inside through an endosome, it, uh, it uh, pumps proton in the, in the endosome and it becomes acidic. Acidic nature of endosome is prerequisite to eject out this complex in the cytosol. Once it goes to the cytosol, it can bring about its uh, toxic effects. For example, ATP is converted to cyclic AMP by edema factor and too much cyclic AMP brings about many pathological effects. On the other hand, lethal factor when it goes outside, it can convert, it can clip MAP kinase kinase enzyme from N terminal and eventually it causes death. Bacillus anthracis is considered to be a possible vehicle of mass death. It is categorized as weapon of mass destruction, WMD. And its destructive capability was calculated by a mathematician and it found to be equivalent to nuclear bomb. And remember, to create a nuclear bomb, you need all kinds of technologies. But to grow this bacillus anthracis, I think anybody sitting over here with little training can grow in the laboratory. And if you make it weaponized, weaponized means it has to form aerosols. It has to freely uh, flow in the air without being uh, coming down to the earth so that people can inhale it. And because of the poor diagnosis, you know, the symptoms appear after two to five days. So the person neglects, person doesn't even know that you have inhaled bacillus anthracis. You go into the, you don't go to the clinics. So there are diagnostic methods which are available, which is prescribed by CDC, uh, X-ray, CT scan, smear and culture, antibody testing and PCR based uh, diagnostic, but still in India not many labs are doing it. And this is the kind of uh, suspicious letters were there in 2001 when a notorious person, uh, by the way, that notorious person was working in my laboratory in United States. His name was Bruce Ivins. Bruce Ivins was a little, little different. And one day he was talking to all of us when funding for research on anthrax was going down. So he said it only takes few envelopes to increase the funding. So when, when people died in Florida, another uh, collaborator of mine uh, from, from Arizona, he was given this task by FBI to find out from where these spores uh, originated. And uh, so, you know, all the spores was collected from anywhere in the United States where people were working on anthrax. 
and uh, they did uh, uh, whole genome sequencing and found out the origin of this uh, anthrax attack was from Yosemite Frederick uh, from where I came to we came back to India they went and inspected everything and eventually they zeroed down to Bruce Ivins and uh, they called him late in the evening and asked him that he can come tomorrow 8 o'clock in the morning to have little discussion with FBI people he understood that he has been almost caught and the same night he committed suicide so you Samarit people say that uh, it was not finally proved but I think the evidence was enough uh, that it was his creation so what to do I think the easiest solution comes to our mind is to develop a vaccine against anthrax. So what is the current situation? <clears throat> Stern vaccine, which is nothing you know, one of the plasmid has been cured, so it cannot cause the disease. This can be used as a vaccine and this is the most popular veterinary vaccine against anthrax worldwide, including India. Russia uses still the animal vaccine for humans. In UK and United States, they grow bacillus anthracis in fermenters and the supernatant they use to precipitate with alum and make a crude vaccine and that is what is being used and it is tightly under the control of US Army. So even if they agree to give you, there is no guarantee that if you do Pokharan, they are going to give you forever. So, we have to develop our own. But the disadvantage of this vaccine is, this is still having some residual virulence because of the presence of about 10% other proteins, including lethal factor, including edema factor. So, for human beings, it's not fit. Although, US Army is still using it because soldiers cannot, soldiers have to follow discipline, they cannot say no. And there have been cases where these soldiers had very, very serious side effects. Sometimes there were few deaths also, but still they are going on. <clears throat> so this is the current situation of US and India. India is still producing only stern vaccine. So what is the solution? The solution is we have to develop a recombinant vaccine where only protective antigen is present and no other protein is present. The job is simple, but of course, two decades ago, two and a half decades ago when we, yeah, please. Yes. Yes, it is very specific receptor for the binding. Yes, I will, I will show you all those approaches in my lecture. It's a very comprehensive lecture. I am afraid it may not go beyond one hour, okay? All right. So, one, one strategy is to develop a recombinant vaccine against anthrax and that's what we followed. So, the job is simple. You take, uh, you take uh, PXO1 and uh, just, you know, PCR, PS, PCR uh, protective antigen gene out and put it in a uh, expression vector and uh, give it back to equal I. It will make tons of uh, protein for you and that's what it did. Uh, it made uh, very good amounts of protein and which we purified by successive chromatographic procedures and finally we could purify uh, which is as good as uh, protective antigen. Now the question was whether this uh, protective antigen is biologically exactly similar to the native one or not. So what we did, we took native protective antigen as well as recombinant protective antigen and radio iodinated both of them and uh, put it on the cell culture to bind it to the receptor to see whether they can equally bind to the receptor or not and as you can see both of them could bind about 80,000 uh, counts per minute in both the cases so that means 
they could recognize the receptor. Then the question was, as I, as I showed you in the cartoon, that protective antigen is clipped into 63 kilodalton. So we wanted to see whether this 83 kilodalton protein is clipped uh, to the eight, uh, 63 kilodalton or not, and it was. And then we wanted to see whether this clipped protein recognizes lethal factor or edema factor or not. And we took a protective antigen, which is 63 kilodalton, and uh, through little uh, lethal factor, and they could find a, uh, we could find a protective antigen lethal factor complex. So that proved that the molecules can recognize each other, no problem. But finally, we wanted to see whether uh, this protein is as good as uh, native one in terms of killing the cell line J774, which is a macrophage cell line. So what we did, we took uh, a different amount of protective antigen and uh, lethal factor and tried to measure the lethality of the cell. And that is what we saw whether we take recombinant protective antigen or we take native antigen, both are able to kill the macrophages to equal extent. In fact, both the graphs are more or less superimposable. Then the final thing came, we wanted to check whether uh, this vaccine candidate is able to give protection to the animal model or not. So what we did, we took uh, mouse model. Mouse is the very sensitive model. Uh, let me tell you, if uh, any vaccine, again, anthrax, is able to protect 50% mouse, uh, mice, uh, it will give better protection in uh, guinea pig model, even better protection in uh, rabbit model or even uh, monkey model, and uh, probably they will give the best protection in uh, human. And that is what we did. And we were very fortunate that we could get about 66% uh, prote protection by using the recombinant protective antigen, and which was as good as native antigen, which gives us the confidence to try out this vaccine on higher animal. So we worked on guinea pig, where it gave about 80 to 100% protection, followed by rabbits and rhesus monkeys. Okay? Rabbits... Again, we got 100% protection, as well as in monkeys, we could get 100% protection. So that gave us a lot of confidence to uh, go to the, uh, go to the uh, industry. And at this point of time, what we did, we, uh, we were contacted by a very famous drug company. They came to Jawaharlal Nehru University and uh, uh, they asked many of us that whatever you have developed, come and uh, present a talk like this. So all of us presented our work. Somehow this company liked this and they said that we would like to buy this technology. So I said, okay, what are you going to give us? <clears throat> so they said that we can give you 40 lakhs rupees in 10 installments. And uh, first we have to take this uh, clone and take it to our company and try to <clears throat> try to see whether we can make uh, uh, economically viable technology uh, to make some money. So I asked the company that, uh, what do you need from us? They said, we need your clone. I said, suppose you take my clone and if it doesn't work, what will happen? And we will return your clone. And we will not ask you to return 4 lakhs of rupees. So I said, what if in the meantime you have just copied it? It just takes a streaking to get the clone. So the deal didn't work. And uh, I went to my funding agency, uh, that is DBT, and I told them that this is the scenario and tell us what to do. So they said, you tell us what should we do. I said, you give me the money to upscale the technology so that <clears throat> I can tell the industry that this is the kind of levels we are making, whether it is economically uh, viable for you or not. 
and then they don't have to take my clone. So DBT agreed and they gave me another grant to do that. In this grant, we could upscale the technology in a fermenter uh, where uh, equivalent to 1 million shots per liter were made by optimizing the uh, bioprocess conditions in, uh, in the fermenter. And now we were having confidence that we can talk to the industry and tell them, hey, here is the technology which can make 1 million doses out of a liter. So suppose you know in the industry you have 1000 liters fermenters. So you can make 1 billion doses. I don't think you will be able to sell 1 billion doses so easily. So then what we did, we I wrote a letter to all the uh, uh, biotech industries in India, something like 10 or 20 of them. All of them responded to me uh, in a nice manner. Uh, somebody wrote that, yes, 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 it looks interesting. We are looking into this. We are surveying the market. We are doing this, that. But one company was bullish. Within two hours of receiving this email, they came to me in my office. And uh, they said that we would like to talk to you. So I told them that, uh, who are you? Whether you are at a position that you can take a decision on this technology, buying? He said, no, we will, we will have to report it to our managing director. So I said, I would not like to talk to you. I would like to talk to the person who can take decision. And number two, since you are a private company, I don't talk to you free of cost. You have to pay money for my time. And the cost of my time is 5,000 rupees an hour. So you can come and waste my time as long as you want, but the meter is on. And the third condition was that when you come, see, I come from Delhi, I'm sure in Benares, <clears throat> if you want to buy a flat or something, uh, the, there is some mediator in between, we call it property dealer. And if you want to buy something, he says, bring some bayana, bring some advance payment. And unless you put the money up front, uh, the deal is not serious. So I said, when he comes, he has to bring his checkbook. And if the deal is done, he has to give some, uh, some uh, token payment so that the deal is locked. So these people immediately informed the managing director of that company. And within seconds, I got a call from him. And he said, I would like to come and see you. I said, have you been told all the three conditions? He said, yes. I am ready to risk 15,000 rupees tomorrow morning, if you can give me time. Uh, first hour, you tried to explain me what this technology is. I am an uh, undergraduate from chemistry, from Delhi University, followed by MBA from uh, IIM. I am a marketing man, so make it simple. I said, okay, no problem. And if I am convinced, I will call my R&D chief, my vaccine development chief, my IPR chief, my uh, clinical trial chief, everybody. And then you can make a proper presentation. And if they are convinced, we can have another hour to discuss the price. And I am ready to risk 15,000 rupees. So I said, okay, come over tomorrow morning. So he came. I finished my class at 10 o'clock. I gave him time for 10 o'clock. He was waiting for the last 10 minutes in the corridor. So he was serious. So we sat and I explained him what the technology is. And he said, looks interesting. So he said, when can I call my different chiefs of different departments? I said, ask them to come tomorrow. So tomorrow he brought four of them. And I made a presentation like this, which scientists can understand. And uh, 
all of them uh, they decided that let us go for this technology so then he asked those four scientists to go back and the third hour started that we can discuss the price and that was the most interesting part since you know this uh, other company was giving me only 40 lakhs over a <clears throat> you know 10 installment business and now we have added some value so i thought let me ask something more than 40 lakhs at least so they asked me the price i i told that uh, i would like to charge 1 crore rupees for giving you this clone so the guy said given i was at a loss maybe i asked too little <laughs> so i said uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, this one crore which i am charging if you exploit this technology uh, for indian market then the price is one crore so he said no 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 i would like to have total rights so i said okay then the price is two crores he said i can give you one and a half crore so i said why one and a half so he said i'm not very sure whether i'll be able to exploit the technology uh, in international market i said if that is the case let's make two contracts one for indian market another for international market if you don't use international market i don't want your 50 lakhs keep it with you so he thought for 20 seconds he said no 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 i don't want to make two contracts so i give you two crores so the deal was stuck he asked uh, dr saab do you need something else i said still there is some scope <laughs> so i said see i am charging you for developing this clone 2 crore of rupees but you are not buying me if you use my services you have to pay consultancy so he said okay tell me what will be your uh, consultancy charges i said it depends how long do you want to use it so he said i would like to use it for next 2 years i said for next 2 years 24 lakhs 1 lakh per month at least but remember <coughs> this price does not mean that you have hired me as an employee you can only consult me and consultation means you can call me you can come to my office and discuss with me you can write me an email and ask any question i will let you know he said dr saab agar aapka practically zarurat pada company mein tab kya hoga so i told them that my students you know they have done all that work so i can depute my students and they can help you to make this molecule but remember you have to pay them it's not free so he asked how much do i have to pay so i said if i can charge 5000 rupees an hour my student should get at least 5000 rupees a day that should be the minimum so he agreed on that and uh, at that time uh, we closed the deal and soon after that uh, dbt secretary at that time manju sharma was there she called me and he said rakesh we gave you a project on developing this vaccine uh, what is the situation i said what all was needed to be done in the laboratory has been done and uh, now we have to give it to the industry because that's not our cup of tea anymore so she said do you have some industry or shall i help you to find one i said there is a guy who looks to be very serious and you know, whenever deal is done just bring him over to me so i asked a guy would you like to come to meet my secretary of dbt she was secretary of the ministry i said yes 
think that we sit in the corridors in the ministry and wait for hours to meet the secretary and she's calling you i said yes why not so he said sure i'll come so he went with me to dbt secretary and uh, secretary only asked two questions have you understood what you are buying he said yes rakesh have you understood what you are giving so you are on the same page i said yes so then she asked by technology consortium of india to make a contract so the same night contract was made incidentally the managing director of uh, uh, this organization uh, biotechnology consortium of india uh, is also my student so she came to me and uh, i helped her to draft it a little better so that uh, uh, bureaucracy doesn't come on the way i can share with you i defined for the purpose of transferring this technology genu means the developer of this technology rakesh patnagar otherwise what will happen the money will go to some uh, let us say babudam and i will be after them to release my money and they will ask me give me this give me that sign here fill out this paper that paper so i didn't want that so i told that uh, i i wrote in the contract that company should make two checks one in the name of jawaharlal nehru university another in the name of rakesh patnagar so i will only give a photocopy of my check to university they will never receive the check so they cannot encash it it is not on their name so it will be easier because this was the first example of getting money from the industry before that nobody Uh, so i wanted to be very careful so that the uh, bureaucracy should not trouble me <clears throat> anyway to cut the story short the technology was transferred to this company called uh, panacea biotech limited a pharmaceutical company already producing vaccine for polio and hepatitis b scientists from panacea biotech came to my laboratory and they were trained to make this recombinant vaccine genu scientists have gone acha then what happened once they took the clone okay they took the clone and two days later i got a call that it doesn't make protective antigen i said what nonsense it was making in your hand and now you are saying it doesn't make so then we started the clause that uh, i will not come to your company but i can send my students so i think i sent about uh, maybe 3 4 students over there to help them and by the way one of the students who was a married person with with a child with which had some some uh, i mean he was a special child so he needed a little more money than other students so i asked him to go and he worked there for 37 days to help them to produce five batches under gmp facility this person when he came back after 37 days he got 1 lakh 70000 rupees check which he used to buy perhaps a maruti car at that time there was only one maruti not so many kind of uh, uh, big cars and uh, some other students went and they also somebody stayed for a week somebody stayed for two weeks somebody stayed for whatever time and they were all paid all that amount so penicia uh, made these five batches under gmp facility toxicity studies on mice were conducted by realis india corporation in bangalore and the vaccine was found to be non toxic and then of course uh, we went to drug controller of india and uh, took the permission to start uh, uh, human clinical trials and you all know that all these studies take very long time so phase 1 and phase 
human clinical trials have been completed and uh, they found to be safe. And because of that, we got several national and international patents to our credit. So the story doesn't end here. Uh, this is, you know, one part that things have gone to the industry. Protective antigen is a very good uh, immunogen, but uh, if you add little amount of lethal factor and little amount of edema factor, it becomes a better immunogen. But as I told you, these, these molecules cannot be added because it, the vaccine will become toxic, even lethal. So what to do? The thing is simple answer that you make uh, certain mutations in these molecules in such a way that any step in the intoxication is inhibited. And that's what we did. This is, for example, protective antigen, one of the domains, which is involved in binding to lethal factor and edema factor. And I'm sure there are some amino acids which are involved in this binding. So what we did, we did site detected mutagenesis and tried to find out and finally, we came to the conclusion that these four amino acids are involved in binding. So if you mutate them to alanine, they won't be able to bind and the vaccine will become non-toxic. Similarly, in domain two, these two amino acids, which are involved in membrane insertion, if you change them to alanine, uh, it cannot insert in the membrane and therefore it becomes non-toxic. And similarly, in domain 3, which is involved in oligomerization, if you change these four amino acids, the vaccine becomes non-toxic. Then we also try to look at uh, these two molecules, lethal factor and edema factor, uh, because they both bind. If you try to recall the cartoon I showed you, they both bind to the same molecule. So we thought perhaps they are using some common kind of domain and that's why they are able to bind to the same place. And when we uh, did again, you know, side directed mutagenesis, we found out that these seven amino acids in a row, uh, they were common in both the molecules. And when we changed one after another, we could find out that there were four amino acids which are shown in the gray, tyrosine, tyrosine, isoleucine, and lysine. If they are converted into alanine, they are not able to bind and that's how the vaccine becomes non-toxic. Similarly, same four amino acids were found in edema factor and the vaccine became non-toxic. The story doesn't end over here. We also tried if we can make a DNA vaccine where we took protective antigen and put LAMP1 and TPS sequences upstream or downstream and try to see if it can give protection. It does. Then we wanted to find out, it is such a big molecule, protective antigen. Is it really the whole molecule is needed for uh, giving the immunity? And we zeroed it down to a small region of domain 4. And over there also, we further uh, found out that there are only 50 amino acid uh, residue peptide can give you the protection as good as uh, the whole molecule. There was an era when people were very bullish about edible vaccine for animals. So what we did, we got a World Bank project to, to put this protective antigen in the plants. First we did in tobacco plant, which is easy to transform. And finally we went to the tobacco plant and uh, we could make protective antigen in the plant, which was also able to protect the animals uh, uh, by giving protection. Until now, I have talked about what you can do it before. That means vaccination. But what if somebody has not taken the vaccination and one comes with the anthrax? What to do? So there are three approaches which we followed. First thing, targeting the inherent mechanism of bacteria. How to commit suicide? See, some of the humans commit suicide. Bacteria also know how to commit suicide. We, we just have to induce them, okay, to commit suicide. Another is we wanted to find out certain compounds which can, which can inhibit the process of intoxication, okay. And the third thing is that, the, that either we can 
develop some antibodies which can be injected just like in cancer you inject antibody if it can if we can inject the antibody it can uh, it can cure the anthrax so let's go one by one uh, this is a <coughs> uh, approach we call it toxin antitoxin toxin antitoxin these are ta pairs usually these two genes are present next to each other Antitoxin and toxin, when they are expressed together, they bind to each other and cell death doesn't occur. Bacteria survives. But when bacteria decide to die, what do they do? This antitoxin molecule is proteolytically cleaved and the toxin can kill the bacteria. This is the way they commit suicide. Under adverse condition, for example, if you inject antibiotics, if you inject, uh, if there are certain conditions where there is not enough food is available, so they think that okay, some of us can commit suicide so that others can survive. So we uh, took that approach and tried to find out if we can, uh, so we could find out this uh, toxin molecule could, could certainly kill bacteria, but uh, the peptides which we have used in order to stop the interaction between the toxin and antitoxin could only give us about 30 to 40 percent uh, uh, inhibition in the cell death. So it was not very successful molecule. Again I am showing you the same cartoon which I showed you earlier. Suppose you try to make a molecule which does not allow interaction of protective antigen and lethal factor. Then it will not allow to kill the cells. And that's what we did. In collaboration with one of my colleagues, uh, he figured out certain molecules with the you know, very big library of compounds uh, which can stop this interaction. So we use these molecules and found out by using SPR technology that they are really inhibiting the interaction and that's how the toxicity was almost reduced. And similarly he gave another molecule which was also uh, used for blocking this interaction and it has also reduced the toxicity so perhaps it can be used. But most interesting thing which I am going to share with you, uh, so uh, we found certain, th th this work which I am going to present you, this is in collaboration with the uh, Defense Department of India and uh, they are also very much keen on developing biodefense against anthrax. Suppose tomorrow uh, Pakistan uses it or some terrorists use, so we, we would like to have protection. Yeah, please. Panacea went up to phase 2 clinical trials yeah. and they are ready for uh, making phase 3 clinical trials. They are, they are compiling their data to get permission for phase, phase 3. Okay. So uh, there, is, there is another approach also we, we tried with along with the uh, defense people. See the spores, when they germinate, their first point of contact is through a protein. Uh, and we wanted to make use of that protein also. So what we did, we made a construct where uh, our domain 4, which is the most immunogenic, as well as this uh, uh, protein, which is the first contact uh, with, the, with the eukaryotic cell. So we made this uh, construct and made recombinant protein. And this is also giving 100% uh, protection. So this is again another very good candidate, which uh, perhaps defense people would like to take it further and I am collaborating with them. See again the same data BSL1 protein along with protective antigen. Uh, okay, in conclusion, okay, uh, we have cloned overexpressed protective antigen gene. Bioprocess was optimized for the production of uh, at industrial scale. Recombinant protective antigen was found to be biologically identical to native antigen. Technology for producing recombinant vaccine was transferred to Panacea Biotech. Human phase 1 and phase 2 clinical trials based on recombinant protective antigen vaccine has been successfully completed and is ready for phase 3 clinical trials. Non-toxic and catalytically inactive variants of protective antigen lethal factor Edema factor have been generated for development of better anthrax vaccine. 
protective antigen based dna vaccine has been developed b cell epitope based that short peptide vaccine has been developed pa gene was expressed in tobacco and tobacco a step towards developing edible vaccine the toxin antitoxin based antimicrobials were tested an effort to make uh, this uh, engineered antibodies are oh sorry going on and this monoclonal antibodies which we have made we are trying to make it uh, uh, humanized antibody so all this work has been done and uh, i would uh, be failing in my duty if i don't acknowledge the funding agencies the special thanks to uh, department of Bi biotechnology government of india they have been consistently funding us for the last more than 20 day, 20 Uh, years in in council of agriculture research in in council of medical research council of scientific and industrial research and department of science and technology and some of our collaborators which helped us in different times and uh, this this list is not complete uh, these are the hard working phd students who work day and night without them it was not possible so i think the credit goes more to them less to me so i would like to acknowledge each one of them i think there is something like 20 of them who have worked for uh, phd on anthrax this is just to show you the glimpse of my lab okay so this is how my lab looks from outside uh if you want to see it from inside see it has two floors uh ground floor is uh, bsl3 lab all of you know what is bsl3 okay so bsl3 lab uh, where uh, uh, this is how you work you 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 enter in the change room one and you remove all your outside stuff so that you are not taking the uh, bugs with and then you dress up like this uh, you you wear an overall you have a np95 uh, uh mask uh, you have goggles you have everything and then you then you go inside and work uh this is the corridor where either you can go to the animal isolation room towards the absl3 facility or you can go to the molecular bio biology side where you can work anything on molecular biology see this is how it looks from inside so this is this is how Uh, you can work in this laboratory and uh, uh you have a very good uh, animal isolation facilities where we have uh, individually ventilated cages so that all the animals breathe separately uh, suppose you are working on any uh, infection which can be passed through by uh, by contaminated air it will not happen because you can individually remove the uh, the cages do we have such facility here no not yet i think you should have okay uh your proposal good okay so uh, so it's very easy to work you you just there may be some anthrax infected there may be some uh, non anthrax infected controls as we also sometimes works on tuberculosis so tuberculosis is a you know airborne disease so it can you can simply remove uh, one cage at a time and go and sit in a hood and work with that and then close it so there is no chance of uh, spreading the contamination and infecting another animal or the user you know who, who are working in the laboratory our students are very dear to us so we we don't want to take any chance and uh, this is you know maybe at that time these were the students who were working when i took these pictures but uh, i have guided something like 58 phd students and i think out of that at least uh, 40 would have been on anthrax thank you very much and if you have any question i will be very happy to answer sir thank you thank you for a very informative and a very illuminating lecture we are very grateful for this network thank you can you hear me sir Yes, 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 I can.
Sir, what I would like to ask is. Can you identify yourself? Sir, I am Dr. Sapna Suneja. I am uh -huh. uh, from the Department of Microbiology. Okay. I am accompanied by my uh, department head, Professor Dr. Lavina and Dr. KD. Most welcome. Thank you, sir. Sir, what I would like to ask is, your lecture yes. has made us sound so simple. And I would like to ask you, this isolation of protective antigen, yes. did no one attempt to do this before when you were working in the US? Let me tell you, uh, from native bacteria, this antigen was isolated in United States. There was no problem. Okay, But recombinant vaccine, uh, people did not make. It was very difficult to purify at that time. Today it's very easy. At that time I remember a US publication could only show it in the western that they could make little bit of uh, protective antigen. But uh, we were the first one to make it in such a quantity that it can be used as vaccine. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Our congratulations and gratitude once more. Thank, Thank you. you very much.